What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out why JBL Bradshaw is one of the most hated men in wrestling. Now, I know on uh, on I guess television purposes, like on camera, on the camera side of things, what we saw uh, his character become his pretty much this uh, uh, quote unquote Texan who had some uh, I guess you can say. Uh, old school ways of thinking uh, of how he viewed certain people and certain class statuses you know it, it was a really good heel character considering uh who he would be feuding with at the time but he also had some backstage heat as well and people weren't a big fan of jbl backstage so i'm pretty sure he's gonna talk about this uh this is by uh stunned by wrestling man uh he has the most hated series so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he talks about this but yeah he was definitely not loved by many of those uh in the locker room as well as the fans didn't like his character as well but that's because he was a good heel so we're gonna check out this video man appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel man Let's get right into this one. Fans will prob probably remember John Bradshaw Layfield for one of his runs in WWE. As Bradshaw, he tag teamed with Farouk in the Attitude Era as the Acolytes, also known as the APA. Mm -hmm. Later, during the Ruthless Aggression Era, Bradshaw would morph into a totally different character that of JBL and would main event the SmackDown brand and become WWE Champion. Mm -hmm. Bradshaw started his sporting career in football, having signed with the Los Angeles Raiders, but he was mm. released before the 1990 season began. By 1992, Bradshaw had transitioned to pro wrestling, debuting wow. for the Global Wrestling Federation based in Texas. Bradshaw had a full and varied career, utilizing an entertaining, roughneck, stiff Texan style in mm -hmm. the ring, no matter which persona he was inhabiting. I'm going to be honest with you, that clothesline, it's just... Bro, he, he's laying it in. <laughs> he's not holding back on that clothesline. His clothesline from hell, it literally was from hell. <laughs> he would retire from full-time wrestling in 2009 to pursue outside interests, later returning to the company in a commentary and managerial role. However, throughout Bradshaw's career, there have been many reports of him attacking other personnel backstage. Mm -hmm. Even viewers watching at home weren't safe, with Bradshaw providing some of the worst commentary in WWE history. In this video, we will take a closer look at exactly why John Bradshaw Layfield is one of the most hated men in wrestling. Hey, we all know, well, for those who don't know, but a lot of us know his issues with Mauro Ronaldo and how he pretty much bullied the guy. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, he, he definitely uh, caused some potential, you know, issues with Morrow, you know, and, and other other instances as well behind the scenes. So. There is one allegation that arises again and again from people who have been around Bradshaw backstage in WWE, and that is one of bullying and intimidation. Many mm -hmm. WWE employees have either reported witnessing Bradshaw throwing his weight around backstage or say that they themselves have been the target of his harassment. The list of former and current WWE personnel that have come forward with these allegations is long, but they mm. each have their own story to tell. ECW legend The Blue Meanie mm -hmm. says that he felt the full force of Bradshaw's fists in the most public way possible yep. on television in front of millions of fans. At the ECW tribute show One Night Stand in 2005, Bradshaw hit the Blue Meanie so hard that he punched open the staples that he'd had inserted into his head the night before, causing blood to pour out of the wound once again. Later, mm -hmm. the Blue Meanie posted on his MySpace page, It's no secret that Bradshaw never liked me from my first day in WWE to my last. Bradshaw's stiff punches to the Blue Meanie's head wasn't an accident, and he even considered 
filing a lawsuit against him in the days after the attack. The Blue Meanie would eventually back off on the lawsuit, however he would still get a measure of revenge when mm -hmm. WWE decided to capitalise on the animosity between the men and book them in a match. Meany's longtime tag team partner, Stevie Richards, clattered Bradshaw with a savage chair Ooh. shot, which was a receipt for his friend's yep. treatment of the, the exact reason that Bradshaw That was a that was a real receipt. Oh man, that receipt but that man, that's the type of receipt that will give you the case of the CTE very quickly. Whew. Sure beat up the meanie in the first place is unclear. Some say that meanie had been writing bad words about Bradshaw on the internet, while Bradshaw himself in an interview with WWE.com said, The incident with meanie had nothing to do with any old heat. I don't even know the guy. I couldn't care less about the fat little kid. For other alleged <laughs> victims, however, it seems that Bradshaw's bullying was completely unprovoked and they felt it wasn't possible to fight back. It seems more cruel to pick on non-wrestlers as Bradshaw allegedly has done on multiple occasions. Not even announcers, referees or women were safe. Charles Robinson and Billy Silverman came over from the rival organisation to work as referees in the WWF. Silverman and Robinson in particular became whipping boys for the bullies. According to Silverman, there were many abuses, with one of the worst occasions being when Robinson was held down and stripped before being bound with tape and gagged. Robinson was then attached to a cart and wheeled around the arena backstage naked for everyone to laugh at. Silverman also alleged that Bradshaw threatened him with violence <coughs> if he didn't carry large amounts of his liquor across the Canadian border for him. When Silverman quit his job with the WWF, he specifically cited Bradshaw's behaviour towards him as the main reason. Wow. Former ring announcer Justin Roberts worked for WWE for 12 years. He released a book after <coughs> he'd finished with the company entitled Best Seat in the House, where he gives a first-hand account of the bullying and harassment he faced during his time in the company. Damn. Roberts stated that Bradshaw repeatedly told him to go and kill himself each time they came into contact and referred to Roberts as dipshit and numbnuts. Roberts also relayed a story in which he had his passport stolen on a tour of the UK, meaning he couldn't fly home with the rest of the crew and had to visit the US Embassy in London to get the situation sorted out. Justin Roberts didn't name Bradshaw in the book, he chose to keep him anonymous instead. John Morrison confirmed that it was him in an interview. Oh. He said that Bradshaw had asked him and his tag team partner at the time, Joey Mercury, to steal Roberts' passport for him, but they both refused to do it. In a long deleted tweet, Bradshaw refuted the claim that it was he who took the passport from Roberts, saying, I didn't take Justin Roberts' passport. Could have been anyone. He was hated by the whole crew. He's an idiot. Dave Meltzer reported in his newsletter an incident where Bradshaw went after a non-wrestler member of staff who had taken time off from WWE to look after a parent who was dying at the time. Hey, man. JBL would have to see me. <laughs> Dang, it's, you, you can only get so many times of disrespect to me. I don't, I don't even do nothing to you. Now, you just going to have to see me, bro. Like... You just gonna have to see me. I don't, I don't care who you are. You just gonna have to see me, bro. And I ain't gonna take no too kindly to you telling me to go, you know. Can't really say it, but you know, I'm not gonna take too kindly to certain things being said. You don't have to see me. Simple as that. I don't, it's I'll say this. Take this if you will. There's not one job in this world that's worth your self respect. I don't care if they're paying you millions, bro. I get it. That money look good. But your self-respect, you got to keep that. Because at the end of the day, you're going to start hating yourself for taking the, the good money. But to deal with the BS, JBL would have to see me, bro. He would have definitely had. Uh, he probably would have had to retire early because, my boy, it would have just been random attacks with steel chairs. I don't know why he got attacked. Who knows, Vince? <laughs> time, Bradshaw reportedly abused this individual for taking time off under the circumstances to look after that parent. 
the target of the abuse was speculated to be Lillian Garcia, the ring announcer. Oh, Garcia wow. was reportedly reduced to tears backstage after the tirade from Bradshaw. Bradshaw had reportedly also previously dumped a bucket of ice water over Lillian Garcia's head. He, br- JBL, you want to know why he was a good heel? Because he was, he, that wasn't him acting. That was him being himself. That's why he worked as a heel, because he's a piece of garbage. <laughs> he was a piece. I don't know if he is like that now, but back then he was a piece of garbage. So that's why it worked for him to portray being a piece of garbage human being. While she was asleep <clears throat> as a rib. Pro wrestling has always had a culture of ribbing and prank playing. The question is, when does ribbing become simply making someone else's life on the road a total misery? Yeah. In Jeff and Matt Hardy's book, they wrote about one of their early encounters with Bradshaw. They wrote, All right then, Bradshaw said, I'm going to give you boys a little assignment. I want you to buy two six packs of beer. On the drive home, I want you to drink them and throw the bottles at road signs. Okay, I said, even though I was pretty sure we weren't going to do it. The next day, we were in Charlotte. Bradshaw pulled me aside and said, Hizardi, your mission was fairly simple. Were you successful? What's that? Did you get the beers and throw them at road signs? No man, we didn't. We don't drink. All we had to do was lie. We should have lied. It would have been a lot easier. Bradshaw was pissed off in the worst way. For the next few weeks, we'd say hello to him and he'd just say, go to hell. We'd go to shake his hand and he would look at us, not extending his hand go to hell air match was next so we went to the ring and wrestled and when we came back air bags had disappeared air clothes air money air credit cards everything the room was completely empty then bradshaw came walking in and said what's wrong guys in his book adam copeland hell no bro 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 nah man Hey, me and my brother, we would have just started jumping you, bro. We would have had a TLC match backstage, and we would have put you through a flaming table, bro, till we got our stuff back. Ain't no way. I, what, what type of dumb request is that, bro? We don't drink like, bro. Just... I'm getting upset like I was there. Nah, bro, we would have had a TLC match, bro. It would have been a two-on-one TLC handicap match, and I promise you, JBL. I would have just, if you don't find where our shit is, we'll, we'll, we'll make you find, my boy. <laughs> On Edge, Edge wrote about a time early in his WWF career oh where he was God. encroached upon by Bradshaw while naked in the showers after a match. The light shining into the shower was suddenly blocked out. I looked over to see Bradshaw standing there in his full cowboy wrestling garb. I went back to soaping myself up until I felt a large calloused hand placed on my tush. I knew both of my hands were in front of me and I had a sinking suspicion I knew what crazy Texan was lathering my ass. In an interview, Rene Dupree described Bradshaw's presence backstage and some of his tactics. Go watch the movie Dazed and Confused. It has a character played by Ben Affleck who basically flunked himself out of high school for the sole purpose that he can come back and haze the young kids coming from junior high and hit them with the stick. That's the best description I can Mm -hmm. give of Bradshaw. He never personally does anything but he gets like people under him like the military a lower ranking person to do his dirty work for him. That Dupree sounds about right. Dupree in WWE at the age of 19 and he says that he was subject to regular abuse from Bradshaw. <clears throat> in a shoot interview he said he's a piece of <laughs> he's a racist huh. he used the term every time I walked into the locker room. Steve Blackman has always wow. been considered a genuine badass. The kind of wrestler who could make you his bitch if he really wanted to. Surprising then that Bradshaw took a pop at him. Bob Holly relayed the story in his book, The Hardcore Truth. Steve and I were waiting around when Bradshaw came over. It was an early morning flight and John was still drunk from the night before. He started patting Steve's ass. Steve said, John, I don't play that knock it off john patted him again and again steve was getting brutally pissed he told him john next time you do that i'm gonna knock your 
teeth out. So of course, John did it again. Steve whipped around and backhanded Bradshaw, popping him with jabs in the face. Oh. John started swinging and missing, and his head was snapping back with each of Steve's jabs. Oh. Steve stepped back, planning to kick Bradshaw's knees out, but he got his leg caught in a bag handle. Al Snow and I grabbed Steve, Ron Simmons grabbed John, and we pulled them apart. John was walking back and forth like a bandy rooster, <laughs> looking to fight. Before we left, Steve told him, I'm going to f kill you. He meant it too. Bradshaw approached Blackman later in the day to apologise, but Blackman refused to accept the apology, with Blackman saying again that he was going to kill him. Oh. At the arena, word had spread amongst the locker room that Bradshaw was in big trouble. If you have something to say to me, say it now, or I'm going to end you in front of everyone, Blackman warned. Bradshaw oh. ended up sincerely apologising to Blackman, who graciously decided to back off. While it's no surprise that the wrestler, dubbed the world's most dangerous man, snapped in the face of Bradshaw's bullshit, it's more surprising to hear that Joey Styles did the same. Wow. Hey, he caught the... He... Y'all know that equation, F around and find out. He F'd around and he found out even back then. That's what the hardest should have did. That's how you deal with somebody like him, bro. You beat the crap out of him. You give them the beats. He was, I believe he was, he was going, he was going to hurt him, bro. Like seriously hurt him. Like don't do that. When someone say chill out, chill out. Ch like chill. Like bro. He get he was he was giving him the beats. It was during the <laughs> Seems like. 2008 <laughs> tour of Iraq, where Bradshaw had reportedly spent the majority of the week severely intoxicated Sound and decided right. to make Stoyles the latest target of his abuse. It's not known whether Stoyles snapped due to a build-up of bullying or a single comment, but either way, he couldn't take it any longer. As other individuals moved in between the two men to try and break them up, Stoyles slammed Bradshaw with a huge right hand, oh. leaving Bradshaw with a black eye that was oh. still visible on Monday Night Raw a few days later. Okay. It's unclear as to whether the punch knocked Bradshaw out, but it was said that it shut him up for the rest of the overseas trip. Hey, man, my boy said you got me messed up. Gave him that one piece good combo. Just one piece. That's all he needed. I love it. According to other backstage <coughs> reports, Bradshaw spent the majority of that Monday night alone in the locker room, being very quiet and spending time with his head down, emailing people on his phone. In the wider context, Bradshaw managed to piss off a country of fans when he got banned from Germany for throwing Ooh. up the Nazi salute and goose-stepping around the ring. It was June 2004 what? when the WWE were on their European tour, stopping off in Munich, Germany for a house show. Wow. Bradshaw was teaming up with Booker T to take on Eddie Guerrero and The Undertaker in a tag team match. During the match, Bradshaw made the Nazi salute not once but numerous times and then went goose-stepping all over the ring. The taunt nearly caused a riot to break out in the arena amongst the fans and Bradshaw ended up being banned from Germany because of it. Nazi saluting and goose-stepping is actually illegal everywhere in Germany for obvious wow. reasons, although Bradshaw didn't seem to care. In an interview later, he said, I'm a bad guy. I'm supposed to incite the crowd. I've done it for decades. I really didn't think anything of it. I know how bad it is. I've lived in Germany. I draw the line between me and my character. By the end of June... T I, I get what you're saying. I know you're a bad guy. But you also got to... You got... I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But you also kind of got to read the room too. You, you got to. There's a, you could have did anything else to piss them off. But you, you, uh, I, I'm always for the heel being a good heel... But at some point, you don't want to use that I'm being a heel to get away with just doing whatever the hell you want and disrespecting whoever you want, especially in certain situations. That's like you, I'm going to be honest with you, you walking around saying uh, the N-word or the, you know, the, the hard R, the hard E-R. I'm like, hey, bro, what the, I get it, you a heel, but what the, f you know what I'm saying? Hold on. We go, you don't have to talk. We don't have to talk. And I get it, Vince's, he hit the, the my nigga and I, I to this day <clears throat> it still makes me cringe and I'm like what the oh my gosh <clears throat> but still it, it, it's, it's 
You gotta read the room. 2004, Bradshaw would become WWE <coughs> champion. The transformation from Bradshaw, the tag team partner, to Farouk into JBL the cowboy hat wearing heel happened in the blink of an eye before we knew it jbl had defeated eddie guerrero for the wwe title this video isn't about jbl's in-ring work or his on-screen persona and i know some people will disagree but i think jbl made for an effective bad guy and i like strong heel characters no he was a great heel i really enjoyed seeing bradshaw as wwe champion i wouldn't call him a wrestling god or anything and i would have preferred to see a three month long reign instead of a nine month long reign but i still enjoyed it after losing the belt to john cena at wrestlemania 21 jbl would be reduced to us title level before starting to wind down his in-ring career and moving into commentary jbl's move into commentary was ill-advised to say the least yeah. undoubtedly he was one of the worst most <laughs> irritating commentators in wwe history and listening to him on raw made a three-hour show feel like a six-hour show in an interview with rick bassman on his talking tough podcast bradshaw was asked about his reputation of being a bully he said you know i could have deserved it i don't know we were younger we broke balls and i was a loud guy from the south and a lot of people, I think, took that wrong. Whatever you believe about John Bradshaw huh. Layfield, there are a few others in wrestling with this many allegations about their behaviour backstage. Yeah, nah, he seemed like he was an asshole. And I, we gotta stop using that excuse that we were young and dumb and all this other stuff. Yeah, that that is the case a lot of times. But you don't have to be a, a, an asshole like that. You don't. No one tells you. No one says when you, you're you young, you got to be this way. No, you can choose to be however you want to be. He just chose to be that way. And people who took it, they took it. And then there's some people that didn't take it. And he would shut, they would, you know, he would end up getting shut up. So, hey, man, comment down below. Let me know. If y'all would have gave JBL some of these beats, man, if he would have did some of the stuff that is alleged that he did, would y'all gave him the beats or would y'all just let it go? Um, I'm one of I'm one of them people. Nah, if I'm the Hardys and you you messing with my stuff, bro, best believe you just gonna see ladders, tables, and chairs being thrown your way, and we gonna have a match. It's gonna be a match. It's going to be a handicap TLC match. And the only way it ends is you find, let us know where our stuff at. If not, you're going through a flaming table. And we're going to have a grand old time giving you several concertos until I get my stuff back. I kind of went on a rant there. Don't worry about it. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K and I am still young. The speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world and your in the clutch world heavyweight champion. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.